We're beneath the floor of Stavanger Cathedral, and we are working on an archaeological project to document the crypt with a particular focus on the burials that we can find under here. So right now we're going to take a sample from this particular uh, coffin for radiocarbon dating, and we're going to try and cut out a, a chunk of it without disturbing <laughs> the rest of it. Let's see. There's already a bit of it loose, so maybe I don't need to cut anything. Maybe if I just pull very carefully. Yeah. We're taking samples from uh, wooden coffins, human remains, textiles, all to find out how old uh, the oldest uh, burials are. Ooh, look at that. It's a molar, even better. To hopefully identify uh, this earlier uh, Christian burial ground and, and, and verify whether or not we have very, very early dates uh, would, would be, have quite important uh, ramifications for our understanding of how Southwest Norway, Norway became Christian. So these are the results for burial one, uh, the tooth and the coffin wood. Now the, re the interesting thing is that uh, we have evidence of reburial because we, we, uh, we didn't only take human remains, we took coffin wood, which turned out to be a very good idea because uh, we wanted to compare the dates of the coffin that they were sitting in to the dates of the, of the bone from the, from the uh, burials. And we can see that the, the age range uh, of the tooth is 1168 to, two, to 1220. And that's at what we call a 95% confidence interval. So we, we're, we're sure within a 95% probability that the date, that it falls within that date range. Uh, while the coffins that they were found in are only about 400 years old. The reburial in and of itself is very interesting. It shows that, that people had this continuing uh, uh, reverence for individuals buried within the cathedral. But the the placement of some of them is, is actually really, really very important. We have pre-cathedral burials here. We have a pre-cathedral burial here. If we accept the, the idea that this guy was reburied more or less where he was found. Uh, and then we have this void right here. In the 1960s when they excavated, there were no human burials found here and we, we didn't see any when we were doing, the, doing our recent work here. So, between these, this burial and these burials, what's going on here? And what that might be, is that it might be that this is actually the place, the placement of the uh, original church. When we, whenever we discuss uh, early Stavanger, the development of the, the establishment of the cathedral, and certainly this, this burial ground here, we always say there must have been a church on the site uh, before the cathedral was built and, and associated with this burial ground. And it may be that this void here represents where the church was located. Archaeologists at the, at, at the Archaeologus Museum in Stavanger, we don't get to do this type of work very often. In fact, most archaeologists don't get to do this type of work very often, working in a in a, in a, uh, underneath a cathedral floor in a very tight uh, uh, tunnel. It's very exciting. And it, particularly with the lead up to the, to the uh, 900th anniversary of, the, of Stavanger Cathedral in 2025, we would like to do everything that we can to, to illuminate or bring to life life in Stavanger in the years up to the building of the cathedral.